Hi everyone! Hi! Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Ship. And in this episode of Let's Talk Ship, we're going to be talking lots of ship about Anthem of the Seas. Ta-da! We even got the model. It's a oh, lovely ship, lovely ship. So Anthem of the Seas was our first Royal Caribbean cruise. It yeah. was a seven-night cruise out of Southampton, going down to Spain and France. Yeah. And we had two sea days. We started off with sea day. Yeah. Then we went to La Rochelle. Then we went to Bilbao. Yeah. La Cruna. Yeah. Then a sea day, yeah. then Le Havre. And he remembered all of that. No, it was, it was really, really good. We, we loved it. But the ship was absolutely spectacular. Yes. Um, really, really enjoyed it. It was brilliant. Before we get right into this video, though, just going to stop you there one second. If you're new here, we'd really, really appreciate it if you kindly consider subscribing to our channel because that would just be awesome. It helps us out loads and we will love you forever. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give us a little thumbs up because yes. that really helps us out too. It does. And we will love it. We, we should love it. So thank you. Anyway... Let's get on with the video. So, Anthem of the Seas is a quantum class ship operated by Royal Caribbean. She's in fact the second ship of the quantum class. Um, she entered service in February 2015. Yeah. Um, she carries quite a lot of people. Uh, 4,180 4, passengers at double occupancy. And that goes up to a staggering 4,905, I think mm. it is, at full capacity, which I think our cruise wasn't far off from. Because yeah. our, our cruise was, well, we sold think it out. sold out. So yeah. it must have been in the 4,000 It must have been high. Um, but it didn't, it didn't feel busy on board, though. I will say that about the ship. That was quite good. Anyway, there's plenty of amazing features on this ship, which we were really blown away by. We had a fantastic time. I know I keep raving on about it, but great features to include things like the North Star, um, the Flow Rider. Yep, the surf, that's boogie board and surfing on the back. That's yep. quite cool. Um, you've also got the uh, Ripcord by iFly. Oh yeah, you've done that, didn't you? Which yeah. is the skydiving thing, which yep. I did. That was great fun. Uh, there's a, a C-Plex which has bumper cars on it and they were so much fun. We really yeah. enjoyed the bumper cars. They were brilliant. Uh, there's also a bionic bar with the little robots make you drinks. That That's was good. That was so, so cool. And then like uh, many other cruise ships, you obviously got lots of pools and things. Um, an indoor pool, an outdoor pool, an adult-only solarium, which I absolutely was, loved. It was like, my, it was like, oh, it was amazing. That was our favourite place. It even had it? like a little swing and all and it was so, so cool. Um, yeah, and the food, like... Royal Caribbean food was phenomenal. Um, we've, it's a, like we said, it's our first ever cruise with the Royal Caribbean, so we were comparing it to our previous experiences. But the food was fantastic. The special and the service as well was service, really good, wasn't it? it? And the drinks package was really, really yep. good. The drinks were lovely. It was, it was just, oh, it was amazing. So really we'll was. we'll go over all the food yeah, so and dining venues. Um, later that's on coming in the video. up. That's coming up. So but as you alluded to, the drinks package. Oh yes. Okay. So Royal Caribbean were doing a special offer um, this year for cruises out of Europe or possibly just out of Southampton. So we fell into that bracket. So um, a drinks package on Anthem of the Seas for us was £40 per person per day, yeah. which is great value because normally it's around the £60, £70 per person mark. And what was really good about this package is it's unlimited. There's no sort of like only 15 drinks, nothing like that. It's unlimited. And that includes some soft drinks as well, coffees yeah. at the like the patisserie place. Um, yeah, included all of those, which is fantastic. Up to the value of, I believe, it was about $13. 13 or $14. Some, um, somewhere around about I, I think they did increase it for the UK cruise to $14, but normally a Royal Caribbean package, I believe, is yeah. $13. But we never it's managed great. to go... We, well, we managed to have ample amounts of drink and yeah. we enjoyed it and we didn't we didn't go over that so it was great if, if there was a, a drinks list in one of the venues i think it was wonderland went into um there was no wine there oh yeah but they went to get you wine which was included yeah. in the package that was great but it was fine so anyway now we're going to start off the whole of this review with the embarkation process because that was absolutely fantastic it was so fast this is gonna be short and sweet just like, just yeah. like embarkation <laughs> basically We've downloaded the Royal Caribbean app. We did our health declaration before yeah. we boarded. We took our security photo before we boarded. Yeah, credit um, card details as well. For our cruise, I mean, this is changing constantly, so don't don't get het up on this. But we had to do a an observed lateral flow test online. We had to pay for it. Yeah, uh, we 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 done that. That was fine. Make sure um, you take printouts of any tests or. Um, 
vaccine um, evidence, anything like that, yeah. just so you've got it, just in case your phone doesn't work as well. So basically, when we arrived at the terminal, that was pretty much it. We didn't have to collect cards or anything. It was just a matter of checking over your paperwork. Yeah, they checked our passports. Checked our passport. And it, it was literally, we, we didn't have time yeah. to film hardly anything because we got out of the car, got to the terminal, and it yeah. was boom, boom, boom. And before we was, knew it, we were on the ship. It was less than 20 minutes. And it was the, one of the earliest embarkations as well yeah. for a cruise ship. I think I remember being stood in the Esplanade at about 20 to 12 and thinking, wow, this is yeah. great. We've never it's been amazing. on a ship that early. Never. So embarkation gets good thumbs up from really, us. That was well, really good. Well done, Royal Caribbean. That was awesome. Okay, so now we've embarked this beautiful ship. We're going to tell you all about our cabin. Now, it was a beautiful cabin. We were really impressed with it. Um, we went for... Um, it was a balcony. Standard balcony. Standard balcony. On deck seven, yeah. mid to forward. Yeah, on the starboard side of the ship. Uh, it was a really roomy cabin. Comparing it to competitor cruise lines, it was it was very very. It was like a long cabin. It had a sofa in it. It had a lovely mirror, vanity area, yeah, loads like loads desk, of storage. Bed was an ample size. Plenty of storage. Well, we found for a seven night cruise anyway. As two blokes, there was plenty of room for us. Uh, the balcony itself was very very deep. Yep. Comparing to like other cruise lines again, because obviously this is our first Royal Caribbean. So we've got nothing in the Royal Caribbean fleet to compare it to, but compare it, it to... It was a really decent size. You're like Princess and, and Piano Britannia and things. They're, they're quite narrow balconies, yeah. quite shallow balconies. This was decent size. Uh, and then going on in about the, the ensuite shower room, that had a proper plastic door. So no, those, no of clingy you, curtain. those of you who don't like curtains will be pleased to find yeah. there's a plastic door. But yeah, it was a lovely, lovely room, kept really well by our steward, Im, Imad. Imad. Right. And he was he was lovely, really, really helpful. He bought us like wine glasses every yeah. night, things he, like that. He, and you know, he, he came around to service the room twice a day. It was, it was brilliant. But it, um, we couldn't get into our room until 2 pm, so we did have a couple of hours to spare. So in that time, we went to do our muster. Yeah, which is which is great. You yeah. can do that. You can and you can pre-watch the video because there's a video that goes with that. You can either watch that on your phone before you even board. Yeah. You can watch it while you're bumbling around, or you can watch it in your cabin once you've once you've got in the cabin. Yes. It is on the telly. But we highly recommend going straight to your muster station as soon as you board the ship because then that's out the way and you can just enjoy your yeah. day. All you need for that is your sea pass, which is on your phone. Brilliant. So the cabin gets a big thumbs up from us. We really, really loved it. It was awesome. <laughs> So now we're going to talk about one of the big aspects of cruising, and that is the dining. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off with the complimentary dining options yep. first. So to begin with, we have the four main dining rooms, and that's the Grand Restaurant, the Chic Restaurant, the American Icon Grill, and Silk Restaurant, Silk, yep. all of which serve the same food it's the same menu it's just the restaurants are differently decorated they've all got their own different quirky theme which was great they're very very pretty um uh, and they're, they're also split into um a set dining or my time dining oh yeah yeah so you love two um sit-ins um i believe one's uh 5 30 i think and the other one eight o'clock um we went for my time so we could basically choose our time and turn up whenever we wanted which was great and that's that's kind of what we're used to we're quite late diners but we'll, we'll normally eat by half eight quarter to nine so we just rock up and there'd be no queues or anything by then it was brilliant but the food at the main dining room was absolutely superb it was lovely mm -hmm. we had i remember i remember now we had this lovely like french onion soup with this thick cheese oh hell it was like it was a meal in itself and that was just a starter you managed to have lobster i had lobster i was put in um Scargo. We have that every night. With garlic. Oh my god, it's heaven. And I was I was putting two meals together again as I usually do. I was putting steak and salmon together like on a plate. It did come out once as two separate meals, but then but another time it came out on the same plate, which was awesome. The puddings were lovely. We had like it's oh, it just so nice. And the service was fantastic as well. And one one important thing that people know us for is our cheese board. Ooh, they do a good cheese board in the main dining room. Yes, if you like the cheese. It's actually listed as a starter called a cheese plate. So what we were doing was having all of our meal, and then we'd say, "Can we please have the cheese plate?" And they'd come, oh, or the cheese board, and they say, "Oh, you mean cheese plate?" And they just it was yeah. from the start, it was, any basically. But it was brilliant. It was great. It was really, really good. Service, everything in the main dining room. Yeah, spot yeah. on every time we went. So in addition to the main dining rooms, you've also got there's a cafe on the Esplanade called Cafe Promenade. Yep, that's also complimentary, and that is actually open twenty four hours a day. So unlike most, I'm going to say most conventional cruise lines, because I know Princess are the same as, as Royal Caribbean, they don't actually have a 
the buffet is not open all the time, but this cafe is, and it served like little sandwiches and little cakes, and you could always get cookies. like tea, coffee, cookies. Yeah, it was really, really good. It was, it was handy just popping out. It was great. Very handy for those late night snacks. Then right next door, <laughs> now this is this is a good one. There's Sorrento's. Oh yes, pe- pizzeria. That was just beautiful. Basically, you can either go in and just get yourself like a slice of pizza or you can order yourself a whole pizza. Or in our case, you can custom make a pizza and the guy will just like make it for you. And then, yeah, you take the whole pizza back to your room, which is what I did. It was it was lovely. I had this lovely Serrano ham uh, with mushrooms and all. And he was like, really? I was like, yeah, yeah, I want that. And then it came back and it was gorgeous. It was, gorgeous. It was absolutely gorgeous. That was a nice late night snack. But we think, well, I, I think anyway... Best pizza at sea. I'm on the fence. It's very... I do like an MSC pizza. I do rate them. I think this is ever so... Just ever so much better. Yeah, it it was. The fact... Yeah, that fact I had the Serrano Ham mushroom pizza made it better. Anyway, now we're moving on to... Because we don't want to run out of time and keep you all day. We've got Cafe 270... Yes. which is by the 270 Lounge. That's, That's another place, complimentary again. So it was like loads of little... Oh, you can get this like beef, um, oh, like yeah, beef, sandwich. beef sandwich. It's good. It's really, really good. And it's literally carved in front of you. They do these little wraps, little salads. Little pockets prawn, as well. Prawn things. There's a whole uh, salad bar. Um, yeah, it's great. You can get drinks there too, like yep. coffees and teas and stuff. Brilliant. Uh, then there's also a... We've got the... Salerian Bistro, oh, which is so. by the Salerian Pool. Now, this is great because it's it's part of the Salerian area, so there's no children in there if you want a bit of peace and quiet. It's, it's only does like breakfast and dinner, but the food, it's basically the same as what you get in the, it's the like, it's like Windjammer. A slim, it's like a slimmed down version of Windjammer. Yeah, basically. And then leading on to that, we have the Windjammer Buffet. Oh, that was brilliant. Self-serve restaurant, which was just phenomenal. The food up there was absolutely, really was spectacular. There was this one day I went in and there was like all these prawns and I managed to get a whole roast dinner. It was a seafood was, buffet oh, day, wasn't and it? And even had like a little bakery in the corner with all these like donuts and things. Absolutely. It was just, oh, I was brilliant. Really, really was. Then in addition to this, the wind jammer, we've got the little ice cream counter. That's oh, free, yeah. which, is by, which is by the pool. So that's free, soft, what did you call it? Like uh, soft, uh, soft serve, Mr. Whitby. Yeah, yeah, there's um, that. And don't forget my favourite place. Oh, Gavin's favourite place, yeah. How could I forget that? <laughs> I, I loved it because it's just so cute. It just looks so <laughs> <Cute>. nice. <laughs> it's, it was the dog house and it's like a... Basically, this little hot dog van looks like it's crashed through the window and it's absolutely <laughs> great. And it, uh, one of the great things about it as well is you can also get like little cans of lager and stuff up there too. Yeah. I mean, obviously that's not complimentary. That's uh, You have to have a package for that. But, but it, yeah. it wasn't just like one hot dog type. You had like three, four different hot dogs the f- and then you different yeah. like you could have onions on them or um some some other like toppings and things but and they were little really, sides they were they were so really good. really good and and it's so conveniently placed like obviously in the sport plex and like next to their open deck yeah. and just pop in and out it was, it was great so that's open all day until around 5 p.m i believe yeah so now we're going to talk about the chargeable dining options so there are four restaurants that are, that incur an additional charge yeah so that's going to be things like um Jamie's Italian, yep, Chops Wonderland, Grill. Chops Grill, and Azumi. Yes. So before the cruise, we bought a three-night dining package, like a trio or dining three package. restaurant dining yeah. package, which allowed us to go to any three restaurants, basically. So as soon as we got on board, we booked up Jamie's Italian, yeah. Wonderland, and Chops Grill. Yeah. Um, we recommend you book it before you board because it is cheaper. It's one, one of those things you need to do before you board to get that saving. So now we're going to talk about these wonderful restaurants. So let's begin with the first of our experiences. That was Jamie's Italian, was Jamie's isn't it? Italian. Jamie's was really, really nice. We had done a little bit of research online before boarding, and I was really blown away by this, like this platter, <laughs> like a, a paddle of, yeah. of like meats and breads, which was absolutely brilliant. The mains were delicious. Yeah, so we had a pasta course. Yeah, that was lovely um, as well. And then some beautiful mains. And the dessert and plenty of wine. Yeah, and the service there was absolutely brilliant. And we also opted to sit, not actually in the restaurant, but on what they call is it the, the Via? The via, yeah, the Via. Which is like this little social area outside with this like massive sculpture in the middle. But it was nice to just watch people watch. And... It was a great place for people to watch, to be honest. Yeah. And it allowed us to do a bit more filming as well without yeah. interrupting other people in the restaurant. Yeah. So next, we're going to move on to our second uh, dining experience, which was at Wonderland, which was very, very interesting. Interesting is the word. No, it was really, really quirky. Obviously, as the name implies, it's based on like a, an Alice in Wonderland kind of concept. It's very quirky. 
Drake and there's all these like funky mismatched cheers and things. It's very mm-hmm. whims like mystical and magical. Anyway, the food was lovely. I really enjoyed it. It's very like interesting, very experimental. It was it was an experience that it might not be food you enjoy, but it's it's the experience you enjoy. Yeah. And that's what I, I enjoyed the experience. It was like there was food that looked like food that tasted different. It was, <laughs> it was strange. It yes. was like yeah, it was very, very quick. And we had some lovely food in there. The starters, basically they gave us everything. They give you one of everything the starter, yeah. Um, I wasn't too keen on like the tomato water, and there was like these little crab cones. We weren't too fond. They, of they were all right, but, but the highlights for us was the the like the prawn. Yes, and lovely. the the smoked eggs, which were like deviled eggs, and mm-hmm. they come out and they take a lid off, and all the smoke comes out. It was oh, it's lovely. And then, like I said, the mains were good. Yeah, I had the snap crackling pork. I think, and it's I called. had the rib delicious beef i think it was called, yeah which was like beef rib thing um that was real like i said they didn't mess around too much with the main no. meal so they were Thankfully. they were substantial and, and nice they were good and the puddings well, well they were they were just well, they, they did the same didn't they? This, they bought you out all the puddings the puddings were out of this world <laughs> Speak it. This I'm saying that because one of our favourite puddings was called the World, and they basically gorgeous. have this chocolate sphere, and they, there's like popcorn around it, and they pour this like hot caramel sauce over, it and it all melts. There's it's peanut got, butter in there as well. Oh, it's I remember, absolutely isn't it? delicious. And then these like little um, like sponge and um, oh, what do you call it? Like meringue, oh, mushrooms. Yeah, the mushrooms, toast sauce. They were lovely. And then there was this apple thing that. It looked like a like a proper apple, but it was actually like a sorbet. It was like mousses and like stuff. A mousse, it, yeah. But it was it was lovely. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. You you found yeah, it a bit it's, too quirky it's, for you. It's one of those. I, I probably wouldn't do it again. I um, would. I it, would. As an experience, it was good. But it wasn't my favourite uh, out of all the specialty dining. So now we're going to go on to our third dining experience. So, so that's at Chop Grill, the American was, style steakhouse, which does exactly what it says on the tin it was delicious <laughs> it was really really good really enjoyed it nice proper steakhousey feel about it yeah food was delicious it really was i had like a like a prawn cocktail started they would like four prawns come out on yeah the thing that was really nice and then i had like a new york strip steak for my main which was delicious they obviously put all the sides in the middle we shared our sides yeah we shared loads of sides the camera we had now there were four of them I know there was definitely like um, there's mac and cheese wasn't there I think mac and cheese and there's these funny little potato croquette things yeah. and the, if I remember potato right tots. we had potato tots and we had like a cream spinach as well I can't remember what the other one was and like. I went for the fillet and then for pudding I had like a key lime meringue pie Ooh, oh yeah. my god it was delicious I mean I love meringue but it was oh yes it was delicious but as, as steakhouses go it's probably it was, it was up there with the, the yeah, best ones really we've done really on the cruises. We definitely do that again. Yes, we do definitely that one again. again. So um, the, this one's all up to him. The this fourth, one's up to me now. The fourth so the, the fourth specialty um, you've got is Izumi, Izumi, which is the kind of sushi, sushi and tapenaki restaurant. Um, so I went there for lunch one day, which Luke failed. To I make. was going to come, but tell you the truth i was really hung over i was very very seasick <laughs> and i couldn't leave the room at that point so i i had um, just a, a, pl- a pl- miso soup to begin with you had like these funny little pea things oh yeah the, the beans to begin oh, with yeah. yeah and then you, what was it what was your your long... miso soup and then i had some kind of i seen uh, photos prawn um deep fried prawn sushi thing okay it was i i have no idea when it comes to sushi so i just thought that looks did you, that did sounds you, good that sounds good that did sounds you, good did you enjoy it it was beautiful there we are so that's what gavin it. reckons i can't give you any feedback Sorry, again people like all the other dining venues service was fantastic as well so there are other things you have to pay for on board yes. there's the patisserie like a, a little cake counter serves starbucks obviously if you have the drinks package which we did the deluxe drinks package your coffees are included because you've paid for them but the cakes were about two pound knife two dollars ninety five two ninety five i think they were yeah but they have some delicious cakes i mean i'm probably doing a pan of it now you'll see <laughs> but there was some gorgeous looking cakes here. Yeah, we really actually good. we actually went in and, and bought some um you you had like a red velvet yes cake, it was, it was and i had was. this like really oh it was delicious it was like this caramel topped like a clear thing <laughs> oh it was so so good finally up on the pool deck we've got johnny rockets so if you're after burgers like your american sort of like yeah yeah proper hamburger jointy place yeah shakes all that kind of thing yeah. that's up there um, and you basically, yes, yeah, you, pay, do have to, you do have to pay for item. that as well. So I think we had a combo, which was a burger, fries, so we had like a cheesy fries, yeah. 
and a drink, and it was I think eleven dollars ninety nine. It was it person. was not it was really nice. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was really really good. I mean, obviously, if you really like burgers that much, don't be put off and think, oh my god, I have to pay for every burger on fries because you don't. You can get that in the buffet or the wind jammer, I should say. We we just had to give it a go, didn't we? Yeah, we were, we, we were so there. We we, 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 well, we have to try it all to tell you people all about it. But yeah, yeah it was lovely. We really really enjoyed it. If you fancy yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a treat, one lunchtime. That's the place to go. So this, everybody, concludes the dining on board Anthem of the Seas. And i got to say, we thought it was great. Yes. My, my clothes, my skinny jeans and my shirts might not think the same because they are now... So some of the best, ah. some of the best food we've had and the service matched as well. Yeah, it did. So now after all that food, we're going to talk about the entertainment. What entertainment is on board Anthem of the Seas? And th there was loads of it. Was to, to be fair, on. it was something going on wherever you went yeah. on board. You would not be bored. Um, so we'll start off with the uh, Royal, Royal Theatre. Yeah, which, which is, is at the front of the ship all the way down on deck. I think it's deck four, five. It, it, covers, it covers the two, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like a two tier. And it was a beautiful little theatre. Um, there were a couple of shows on in there. Yeah, they, I think they had a comedian on in there. Yeah. Um, uh, we did stick our head in and watch what was that? Uh, we will rock you. We will rock you, which was a uh, sort of like a queen, like a queen takeout. Yeah, kind of, yeah, thing. Kind of it, thing. It was, it was a two-hour-long show, which was a little bit too long yeah, for we, me. We popped ahead. It was nice. It always seemed busy. So if you wanted to see a show, make sure you get there early to get your seats. And basically. then you've obviously got the casino, so that's kind of entertaining, I suppose. It's, it's where you go to lose money. <laughs> And then next door you have the music hall, which they do like live, like rock, like rock music, and and quizzes and stuff in there as well. And then they also do like a disco late at night. That's where the late night disco is. That's, that's where that's you were later. I was like, pop, pop, pop. I was dancing away. <laughs> I was loving it. There's a bar and all in there. It's it's, it's great. Uh, then next up we've got the Brass and Bock Pub. Oh, that's the, a, the English style pub. Which is an English style pub. You can get little nibbles in there too. Yep. It's worth noting they are actually chargeable. But I didn't really want to mention that with the with the dining because because it is just little like yeah. light bites and snacks. And um, we've got entertainment in there as well. We have got we're, bands we're... and stuff in there. We didn't actually spend much time in there because it was always rammed. Yeah. So by the time we actually got there, we couldn't really get in. We just did. We just yeah. We didn't bother much. But it looked good. It looked. It, yeah. You know, we went in for a pint once or twice, and as a pub, it it was great. It was fine. Then next up, we've got Boleros. Got, yeah, got Boleros, which as well. was like a Latin kind of place. They do play Latin music. There's live entertainment there. They also do karaoke in there. Yes. We only went there one night. Um, wasn't really our sort of thing. It was, it was a bit weird because you go in and it's like a bit around the you corner. Sort of go and you go around. Yeah. But, but it was all right, you know, as bars go, but just not really, you know, you sort of have your own sort of tastes and preferences and it just wasn't one of ours. Uh, um, then you've got the Shuna Bar. Oh, we enjoyed it there. Didn't Shuna, we? Perry, the Shuna Perry Bar was lovely and uh, Perry Grant was, he was just so entertaining. Yes. He was fantastic. Really, Every really night, fun. nine o'clock, Perry Grant would do a show. Yeah. It lasted about three hours, I think. Yeah, no. Um, always packed. So get there early if you want to see Perry. And then our next bar is the Bionic Bar. So you've Ooh. got the the robots <laughs> and they make your drinks for you. So it's really, really good. You just basically choose your drink on the little iPad. Obviously, tap your card on it. Choose your drink. Robots make it for you. Yeah. It's, it's really quirky, really different. Really it's enjoyed brilliant. really enjoyed that. Um, and next one is our favourite. Yeah. It's the wine bar, Vintages. Now, that was really nice. Really like a classical, nice little wine bar. Yeah. Really cosy. It's a good selection of wines, cocktails. Gins. Um, plenty of room to sit um, inside the bar or just outside on the via or via, whatever yeah, you want to call it. it. Yeah, that was lovely. And then you've got 270. Now, yes. that's both entertainment and a bar and a disco and everything. It's a bit of everything all mushed up. So, basically, it's a large... Uh, two deck high venue at the back of the ship with floor to ceiling pretty much panoramic windows yeah. about two and well 270 degree view that's why it's called 270 uh, they also have these like really cool screens that yes. move and, and they're part of the show so, so we watched Spectre's Cabaret. Cabaret that was that was good there's also a bar there so you can get your drinks that's where you go for silent disco because yes, I fun. really really enjoyed the silent disco uh, and then you can also use it as a bit of a lounge in the day yeah. So you just sit there. They do like quizzes, or you can just take your food from the two seventy cafe and just have. That's, a what, that's what a lot of people out. did. They'd, they'd go in there with their, with their lunch, basically. That's good. And then, last but not least, we have the Cplex. If, oh, as entertainment yes. goes, how much more entertaining? We can kind of yeah, touch on it at the start, didn't we? With the bumper cars. So basically, the Cplex is enormous. It has uh, there's a little arcade 
off the side yes. before you go in, a games arcade. Then you've also got like we we your bumper cars are. So the bumper cars are on for a few hours per yeah. day. On they do lots days. of different things. They do skating. Not yep. that we saw that volleyball. Um, I think we saw. They do, they do like various basketball. games like football, basketball, yep. games like that. Um, then you've also got at the top. There's like um, some games consoles like Xbox. Yeah, there's the kids. Xbox Zone, which is just full of Xboxes for the kids. There's just loads of like. Big it's just an entertainment area mainly for like kids and big kids at heart yes so to be fair there was so much to do on board yeah, was, um you'd never get bored in anthem no. there's plenty of entertainment plenty yes. anyway moving on so after all that food and after all that entertainment and all that partying and bumper cars and all that lot you might want to unwind just relax so basically the health and fitness aspect of anthem the seas uh, includes the vitality at sea spa which we didn't really use. I did have a stick my head and have a, a brief tour around. Now, unfortunately, the, this is up high, up on the high decks of the ship. And there's, it's a premium there's, area, really, yeah, space, isn't There's it? no, um, like, hydrotherapy pool as such, but there is, like, a steam room, a sauna, like a little, like a thermal kind of sweet-ish uh, place. Yep. Then there's obviously, like, loads of massage rooms and treatments are offered. There's a salon and, and things like and that. If, if you want pampering, there's plenty there. There's too. plenty there for you, but for us, like, we usually like the hydrotherapy pool and things like that. So there wasn't enough there for us, unfortunately, for us to actually do it. But we did have it. We did stuck our head and have a look around. Mm-hmm. We had a tour on the first day. Um, and then, obviously, if you're into fitness, there is the gym. Now, the gym is lovely, to be fair. <laughs> it's just, in my opinion, I would have put a bar up there. It nice was a waste of space. Uh, it was in a beautiful place. It was at the top of the ship, big forward-facing windows. Well, the, pretty much went all the way around, and it was a really nice venue. There's plenty of equipment and stuff up there. There's, there's yeah, loads to do. But again, we didn't use the gym. So, yeah, we're just going to pass on now and move <laughs> on to the next part of this. So next up, we're going to talk about the pools and open deck spaces. Ta-da! These are our favourite parts. Oh, well, except for the bars. But yeah, so let's begin at my favourite place Mine on too. the whole ship was the adult only Solarium. Yes. Absolutely beautiful area of the ship. It's got these cascading sort of pools. It's got this lovely tropical vibe about it. There's these hot tubs at the bottom you of the front. Them, Big windows that go all the way around and the sunshine bar as well, which was absolutely brilliant. Perfect service. Staff up there were amazing. Oh, and before I forget, there's these nifty little bridge wings. You can go out the door at the bottom. So you may or may not know this, but you can go through the door. You can stand on the actual bridge wing on the top and you can get some amazing views of of the bow of the ship and down each side of it. It's absolutely awesome. So moving on after the solarium. Next up, heading afterwards, we have the indoor pool. Now, the indoor pool is brilliant. It's sheltered from the elements. It's not too deep. It's about five foot, something five foot three. So you can stand up in it, but it's a, it's a decent enough, yeah. decent enough, enough depth. I couldn't get my words out then. <laughs> um, and it's heated. So yeah, it was great. There's also a bar there, which is fantastic. There's some hot tubs on either side again. This area is accessible to all families. Yep. So it's, it's not exclusively for adults like the solarium is. But... Yeah, it was lovely, lovely space. Carry um, on walking through. Carry on walking through. Now we've got a bit of a breeze blowing through. <laughs> we are now in the outdoor pool area. Uh, it's, again, it's about five foot three. It's a heated pool. Fantastic open space. Uh, there's a bar there as well, the Sky Bar. Yeah, that's, that's, that's to, great. That's, that's open to 11 o'clock at night, yeah. which is good. There's also like a little bandstand uh, just at the top where you can, when we were on board, they were playing like Calypso kind yeah. of Caribbean music, which was great. Opposite that, there's like a movie screen, which I did see movies on when we were having our drinks yeah, we that saw night, and... uh, which was fantastic. Uh, you've also got, just moving on from that, there's like a kid's H2O splash yeah, zone. Yeah, H2O so it's got like a zone. shallow little beach area for them. And the best thing of all, which I thought was really cool, I, I, <laughs> I'd never got to use it myself, but I thought it was amazing, was like this Will Pool Lazy River thing that's sort of like, yeah, it was really cool. I did see some grown ups in there, but I don't know if they were actually just with the kids. It, it, I would have loved to have gone it myself. It, it looked fun, even for a non swimmer like me. It looked really, really, really cool. Oh, and we can't forget, we have the North Star. Which is just amazing. Yes. So if you don't know what the North Star is, it's like um, a Glass London pod. eye or like a pod yeah. on, a, on an arm. On a crane. And um, basically it goes all the way up and it, all, all the way over the side of the ship and around. You can see, you just get some breathtaking views of, of the ship at sea. Well, you, you can do it at port. This is something you might want to 
take note of is you get a one complimentary go up Pier Cruise. Um, so we we did our complimentary one at port when we first boarded the ship at Southampton. Yes. We didn't realise that at the time. We just thought any port day it was free, but it's not. You only get one complimentary one go. go. And then we did pay the $20 yeah, to was, do it at sea. It was like $19. But the first sea day it was closed because of weather conditions. But we managed to do it on our second or yeah last sea day and it was really really good yeah what you'll find is on the port day it will only go up and back down yeah on a sea day it will go up over the around. side and then back yeah. to the other side and so down. this is what we're talking about people this bit up here and on the model by the way which is really cool because it's like magnetic it actually oh yes it moves it moves around how so cool happy. is that so that there people is the north star so yeah we've covered the solarium we've covered the indoor pool we've covered the outdoor pools we've covered the north star and now we're going to move on show them the jogging track that's the jogging next, track that's your next bit <laughs> well i can't really see the jogging track it's there but so, it's not that detail it's just like a so novelty anthem, representation anthem does have a, um, a jogging track which all goes the way along the top all deck all the way around the whole top of the ship which is great yes that's fine and there's also a rock climbing wall yep and we can't forget Gigi. Gigi the, Gigi giraffe. the giraffe she's the she well, I say she she's got a pink ring rubber that's ring <laughs> She's got a pink rubber ring around her, so I'm assuming it. Gigi's a girl. Yes. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so Gigi, she is there. Um, she's really, really impressive, really cool. And then, this is you. Yeah, this, we, I'll we, leave we, this bit to Gav. We, we kind of covered this at the start. Didn't the, we? The, spider, about the spider and a Dyson, I call it. So, yeah, the spider and the Dyson. So, Ripcord uh, by iFly is a skydiving at sea experience, I suppose yeah. you call it. Um, so again, on port days, there's complimentary passes available, which um, you have to book from 8 p.m. the night before. That's when they become available. Book them as soon as you can if you want to do it for the following day. Um, it takes about an hour um, because you go in, you get dressed, you have a safety briefing, um, you get you watch the, yeah, the video safety briefing, you get all dressed up, you go up, and then you get a minute of skydiving. Yeah. But trust me, it feels a lot longer than a minute when you're trying to concentrate and do it. It also feels a lot longer than a minute when you're watching everybody else do it, when you're trying to video somebody doing it, and you stood there waiting, and he's like second to last in his bunch. But and it was about three bunches I watched <laughs> before him, because he went in, I thought, oh, he's going to come up now. No, no, because he had to do all of his stuff. But it's it's, it's hard work, and next day I could feel... But was it ev- fun? Every part of me was aching, but, but was it, it, was, it was fun. It was great fun. I and then last, last of all, we have the flow round at the back of the ship now this is something i was gonna do but i i didn't do it because i had like bad cramp and i didn't want to pull a muscle my leg i didn't want to humiliate myself i was gonna boogie board i was but um yeah it just it just didn't it did seem very popular it was very popular there's a lot of people doing it it seemed very busy so i just i didn't get a chance not on this cruise you know i might try it again but you know, I wasn't overly bowled over by it. anyway. It's so worth it's worth remembering if you're going to be doing the Ripco by Fly or the Flow Rider, you will need to sign a waiver. So now we've given you our in-depth review of Anthem of the Seas. We're now going to give you our final thoughts. <laughs> So what are our final thoughts, Gav? What's the verdict? Are we a big thumbs up or it's a big thumbs down? Yeah, I was, was going to say, it's definitely a big thumbs we've up. We've covered a lot of this, but Anthem is definitely getting a big thumbs it's up. It's fantastic. We really had so much fun. Honestly, so much fun. We were scared when we were making this video, we were going to forget stuff. I had yeah. to literally write notes on I'm, I'm on sure we probably iPad. have forgotten stuff. And but... we, yeah, we've literally, there's so much to remember. So many experiences, so much dining options, everything is phenomenal. But the main, the main takeaways from it, I'd say, is it was brilliant food. Can't yeah. fault the food. Service was phenomenal. Service was fantastic. Everywhere. And it was it was consistent. It wasn't sh- just in one the two ship, places. The ship everywhere. was really, really pretty. Yes. Absolutely loved it. Um, the only disappointing things now, we do have to give... There are some negatives. Not not many. And they're not major. Really aren't. No. Like we said before, we're a bit disappointed there was no hydrotherapy pool at the, the spa area. That was a bit disappointing. But, you know, it's just one of those things. Second, Second of all, there was the internet. Now, oh, yes. w- when you have... You, like you can have the app and on like say MSC that's free you can message people for free but on Royal Caribbean you have to actually pay one ninety nine per person per day to use the messenger only, only the messaging feature yeah, right? only the messaging feature not the app the app is free um, but it's kind of a shame because I, I you'd kind of expect this day and age with families and things on board or with teenagers they should just give that complimentary so that they can keep in touch with their family and, th- and track people or your friends the but. thing is, is if I bought it for one ninety nine. Per day, I have to. Luke as would well. have to buy it for one nine nine per to day to be able to message me 
on it as well. So it's, it's not one ninety nine then, is it? No. It's like three ninety eight yeah. or whatever it is. So if for it, a couple, yeah, it, it is. goes up to like four quid a day. So yeah, basically uh, that's that was that was the downside. Um, oh, and there's no water slides, but that's we knew that before we yeah. boarded the ship, so it's not really a complaint. And we know other Royal Caribbean ships do have water slides, but if Anthem had water slides, well, oh my god, it'd just be perfect. It'd be, he- <laughs> it'd be, be perfect. It'd be heaven on a ship. But no, no. Really, we were so bowled over by Anthem from the Seas. We had a fantastic time, and we would definitely, definitely cruise with Royal Caribbean again, without a doubt. Without a doubt. And to be fair, I think if we if we'd have known what we know now, we would have we'd have done longer. Yes, we'd have definitely done the cruise later and gone for twelve nights without a doubt because we felt we just didn't have enough time. We we came off that cruise exhausted because of just so much going on. But yeah, we highly recommend Anthem from the Seas. So yeah, if you're thinking of booking it after. Just, just go for it. Just go for, go for it. Right. If you've got any questions after this video, because there's probably something we've missed or we've forgotten, um, we are planning to do a live Q and A. Yeah. So we'll get to answer all of your questions. Yes. So, yeah. So you can drop your um, questions you've got in, in the, the comments, comments below. below. So we'll have a quick read through them um, before we do our Q and A, which should be out a week after this video. Yeah. So depending when you watch it, it might have already been, but yeah, usually a week after the video is released, we'll put a, we'll get a Q&A. Yeah. But if you subscribe, hit the little bell icon. I was just going to I was just going to say I was like, but if you would please 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 consider subscribing to our channel, that would just be absolutely amazing. We would love it. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And we also, before I forget, if you're unaware of this, we do have a Facebook group now as well. So you can ask any questions about any cruise lines, uh, any anything. No questions, a silly question in our Facebook group. There's a big group of people there now, probably about 1,000 something members we've yep, got. Over a thousand. growing. Um, they will help you. If we can't answer your question, somebody else there will. Yeah, so. that's the great thing. It'd be a community. And we'll put a link to that. Um, in the description below so from us guys that's it for this video we hope you've enjoyed it and like we said we've enjoyed Anthem of the Seas and we're just going to say thanks for watching thanks for watching bye